Welcome to UFC Breakdown, the fight night preview show that will take an in-depth look at the skills, styles and tactics used by the fighters. My name's Gethin Jones and joining me is our resident fighter and expert analyst, it's Dan the Outlaw Hardy. Dan, I know you're kitted up and ready to go, but the show is all about UFC Fight Night Berlin, and what a card we've got. It is amazing. It's stacked with European talent from start to finish, all the way up the card. We've got some great German fighters on the card. We've got some great British fighters on the card. But the main event, Joanna Andrzejczyk taking on Jessica Penne to defend her strawweight title. It's the first time we've had a women's title fight in Europe, and it's a great matchup. I can't wait. So much to look forward to and so much to talk about. So let's get to it. Here's what's coming up on the show. We shine the spotlight on the upcoming UFC fight night in Berlin. The main matchups will be put under the microscope and Dan takes to the mat to find out where the fights can be won or lost. The strawweight title is on the line. We have exclusive access to the champion's training camp in Poland. I know Jessica will try to take me down, uh, but I will be ready for her. Yeah. And special guest Alex Gustafsson joins us to talk about his upcoming title fight and his views on all the upcoming action at UFC Fight Night. Well, I believe it's going to come in hard. Uh, it's going to put some pressure on and it hits like a horse kicks. So on June the 20th, the UFC returns to Berlin and the card is stacked with some of Europe's finest fighters. Let's have a look at uh, the card now. Uh, and first of all, Dan, the uh, prelims, some interesting matchups in, in this one. So many good fighters. Nicholas Backstrom's back on the card, a really exciting fighter, very dynamic, fighting out of the All-Stars gym. He's also got Mako and Amir Khani helping him out for this training camp, who's another very, very exciting prospect. And the guy that stands out to me, Mirbek Tysimov, preparing in Thailand at Tiger Muay Thai under Roger Huerta. He's a very, very dangerous guy, and he's looked amazing in his UFC career so far. OK, and then moving on to the main card, some local fighters in there and something for the home crowd to get behind. Most definitely. Peter Sabata to start with. I'm really excited to see him on the card. It's his second stint in the UFC, and he's looked fantastic since his return. His striking has come on, but his bread and butter is the ground game. That's where he's very, very dangerous. We've also got Nick Hine, very, very charismatic guy, a background in judo and a very, very strong athlete. And the co-main event, Dennis Siva taking on Tatsuya Kawajiri, a Japanese veteran, a legend. This is a great opportunity for Dennis Siva to really put on a great performance over a world-class fighter. And then all building up to a matchup I know we're both excited about. It's the UFC strawweight title fight. <laughs> Joanna's an extremely tough fighter. However, I think she's a little bit one-dimensional. No one has better strike than me. I see the urgency in her not wanting to go to the ground, so I plan to exploit that. She will try to take me down, but I will be ready for her. We have a great game plan, and I'm going to execute it, and I'm going to take that belt. I am a UFC world champion. I'm not going to let anybody get in my way. They focus because uh, Joanna is coming. Fair to say they want this badly, don't they? Most definitely. It's an intriguing matchup because stylistically both athletes are very different. Yeah, and you're gonna talk about the styles a bit later, right here in the octagon. But before that, we're gonna focus on the British fighter on the card, Scott Askham. So we sent Dan up to the Unit 7 gym in Manchester to see how their preparations were going. I'm gonna see Scott Askham. Uh, I wanna to chat to their coach as well, Darren Morris, and see what he's been working with these guys, because Obviously, this is a big event. I'm sure they want to make a big impact. After a close decision loss in his UFC debut, Scott made the move over to join the Unit 7 gym and the ASW team to prepare for his fight against Antonio De Santos Jr. in Berlin. What are your thoughts on your opponent? Obviously, you know, he's had one fight in the UFC and I'm sure you've studied that. What are you seeing in his game? It comes forward, it, it, it comes to a trade, but I'm looking to expose that, obviously. I mean, what is he, 5'10"? So you've He's 5'10", yeah. yeah. So you've yeah. got a good reach advantage, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, massive reach advantage. You yeah. plan on keep, keeping him on the outside, or...? Um, I want to keep him on the outside. I'm looking to impose my game, uh, yeah. get on the mangles and, and make him pay for that. The thing with Scott is he is nice and tight. Walking into it, set him up. Oh. Oh. He was unlucky in his last fight, let's not be honest, he didn't get beat up. It, he's going to be using his range a lot better. He will be looking to impose that pressure, frustrate the guy, and, and then he will make a mistake. Once he makes a mistake with Scott, I don't think he'll need many chances yeah. to finish him. I've been beaten up by plenty of your guys in the past in submission wrestling tournaments, so do you mind if I jump on the mat no, and join no, you? No, pleasure, mate. Excellent, James. thank you. I'll get my cut on. Yeah, 
It's great to be back in a gym where the coach is coming up to me and spending some time with me. That's really nice. It, obviously, he's got a wealth of knowledge and he's been in the game for so long. He started 35 years ago, so it's a lot of experience. Nice. I've just picked up a couple of things off Darren here. You know, it's, it's good for me. It's like getting a new toy at Christmas. It gives me something new to think about. Turn, lift, now slide it through, and there it is. A lot of times you go into gyms and you see guys, you know, three weeks out from a fight, two weeks out from a fight, and they're still beating the hell out of each other. And that's where we get injuries, people pulling out of fights. All this is technical, they're learning, they're talking while they're doing it. It's a very vibrant atmosphere for learning. Um, and that's obviously why these guys are doing so well. When he tries to sweep you, come up with the combat leg to try and stop him sweeping you. So in the next five or 10 years, when these gyms have started to really show themselves on the international scene, I think the UK is going to be a dominant force. It makes me excited for the future of the sport. So the boys looking impressive in training, but what about the state of the game in the UK in general? There seems to be a lot of upcoming talent. Well, this is something I'm starting to notice a lot more. We have these small gyms spread all around the country and they're training one or two fighters. And I mean, it's amazing the talent that these guys are coming through because the sport's growing so quickly. There are so many good coaches in the UK and they're picking up individual fighters and working on them. And that's exactly what's happened with Scott Askham. It makes that team a very, very dangerous prospect. Great stuff. Still loads to come on UFC Breakdown when we come back after the break. We analyze the cold main event between Dennis Silva and Tetsuya Kawajiri. If Kawajiri is going to win this, he's got to close the distance down. Later in the show, we set our sights on the strawweight title fight between Yuani Yenjacek and Jessica Penny. And look at that. Look at the accuracy of that. And light heavyweight title contender Alex Gustafsson joins us in the studio. Two different uh, styles. Got striker against a uh, grappler, so I can't wait to see her perform.